What does it actually mean to be passionate about your purpose and to lead from your soul? Today on Awaken and Ascend, my guest Camille L. Miller joins me from New Jersey to share how we can cultivate a soul-aligned mindset to create a massively profitable business in harmony with our soul purpose. I'm your host, Jennifer Regular, and also the Soul Illuminator at Lighting the Path. Excited to welcome Camille. She is an intuitive Psych K facilitator, alternative business engineer, and pioneer for the soul professional movement. She has achieved overwhelming success in helping people shift from business owner to entrepreneur through her six-figure soul strategy sessions. She's the founder and chief visionary of the Natural Life Business Partnership. This is a global professional organization for soul-aligned entrepreneurs who live in a higher vibration, have an alternative approach to business, and are here to help repair the world. She is also the host of the weekly podcast, Six Figure Souls, Doing Good and Making Money, which highlights soul-aligned entrepreneurs who crush the six-figure ceiling and still feel that they are in alignment with the universe and their purpose. She recently released her debut book, The Ultimate Guide to Creating Your Soul-Aligned Business, which hit Amazon's bestseller list in six categories, including starting a business, and ranked number three behind Joe Dispenza and Renee Brown in women's personal spiritual growth. I am so excited to have Camille here. She is a thought leader whose mission is to guide and support you to align with your soul and with your work and help you to achieve purpose beyond profit. She believes there is no great secret to creating a massively profitable business that aligns with your soul's purpose. There is, however, and need to shift your mindset to get you here. So welcome, Camille. Wow. (laughs) (laughs) You've really done it and you continue to do it. This amazing (laughs) movement you created, the Natural Life Business Partnership, and really embodying and taking a stand for what you believe in, what you stand for. And I would love to hear how you became soul aligned, how you found the courage and the strength to put yourself out there and begin expressing how powerful doing the soul aligned work can be and what that really means. So how did this all start for you? Where did, what lit your path? Yeah. So before this, I was a not-for-profit executive. So I ran membership organizations at a national level. Um, I was CEO for the state of New Jersey for the Northeast Organic Farming Association. But in that role, I got to meet very holistic people very soul aligned people. They just happened to be doing other work. Like they were doctors or scientists or teachers or wall street executives. They were doing other things, right. But they were very holistic at their heart, very soul centered. Um, And for the first time in my life, my corporate personality and the person I was at home kind of intertwined perfectly. And I got to bring my whole self to work and that's where it really started. Like, why have I been living these two diff- different lives? Like who I was professionally was different than who I was personally when I got home. Right. Mm-hmm. I just like shed that corporate shell of myself. Um, so in that role, I got to be me. And I was there for years uh, advocating for what I loved. And when that job was defunded in 2015, I was kind of searching for what am I going to do next? Mm-hmm. And looking for my professional tribe, I couldn't exactly find it. So if I looked at a traditional business group, right, or a networking organization, uh, it was very egocentric to me. Like, it didn't feel good. I'm an introvert. Uh, It was very hard for me to kind of discover who I was or what my next steps might be. Uh, And in the holistic organizations, because there's plenty of those as well, I didn't feel like they were centered in business and as professional as I wanted Mm. to be or be looked at, right? I wanted the professional credibility. I've come out of a corporate world. You know, I'm used to having professional organizations, you know, that align and uh, I couldn't find it. So I ended up creating it, Uh, but we started as a small little coffee club. Uh, first in New Jersey, then we got to New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, Delaware, and we started to spread throughout the Northeast. And it was at the end of 20, 
17 um, that someone from California called me and they're like, oh my gosh, I can't wait for you to get out here. And I knew in that moment that I did not have a scalable model. <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. I was a single mom. Uh, I was just like, I, I just can't keep doing this. I, I have to be more at home. How can I do this? How can I line myself with the right people? And you know, start to grow this a little bit. Cause at that point I decided to make that my business and to grow it. Um, so we heard of this thing called zoom and we launched in 2018 as a fully virtual non-chapter professional organization. So we were way ahead of the curve. And I got this feeling that someday this would become very valuable if I could teach people to do business globally through zoom. So, um, in 20, so we were able to go national overnight, right? The person in California joined, we had, um, a national organization. Cause I never believed that we would be as big as we are today. I just wanted to be national. And I thought that was really cool. Yeah. Uh, by the next year we went international. And of course in 2020, we went more for that high-end entrepreneur that okay. were leading businesses from their soul. I didn't want to play small anymore. Mm -hmm. And I really had that passion for helping others become big too. Cause I really feel like together we, we create the impact in the world. It takes all of us to thrive and help. And how can I teach business at a level um, that's really so aligned. And we talk about abundance. We talk about allowing, you know, we all pick a word of intention for the year. So it's a very different way to teach business, but mm-hmm. we teach the, the business, the finance, but also the mindset and the self-care. Um, so that's a little bit about our story. And in 2021, I rebranded, we decided to go really big and become a professional organization that was really aligned with the American Medical Association, the Bar Association, or a trade association that holds its members to a higher standard. Oh, wow. Um, so that's where we, and we trademarked the word sole professional. And then I started um, actually recently getting back on stages and podcasts and really talking about what's the sole professional movement. And really it's this integration of your personal and professional lives and leading from this place of abundance and kindness and generosity, but building wealth while we do it. Because the only way we help the world is if we build wealth and start doing things and controlling our money in a way that is aligned with our values. Yes, and that's what true transformation is, is creating permanent, lasting change. And the only way to do that, like you say, is to bring it all together, to bring it into harmony and to make it sustainable. You need, like you say, you need that wealth and health, (laughs) right, to make it sustainable, to keep it going, to keep it growing and evolving. And I love how we're hearing more and more people talk about that shift from career and corporate, especially into their calling. So can you talk more about what that's all about? How are we moving into our calling? What's, what's the power of purpose? And especially when it comes to that driving us. And like you say, it's not so much being driven by the ego. It's driven by soul from our heart. So sharing a little bit about more about that and what, what that means for you in this movement. Yeah. So, um, I always encourage people when I talk to them personally, right. Or in the community, but I always ask what makes your heart sing? Mm. What is it that you really want to do? Like if money didn't matter, what is that ultimate dream to you? Do you see yourself, you know, for me, I want to live in Italy three months out of every year. I want to have a business that's virtual, Um, you know, I want to serve others. I want to see other people's successes. I like working in groups. I don't do a lot of one-on-one work only in special cases. Um, and following what I know is my passion, Mm -hmm. right? What I know is my purpose. So I always say my purpose in creating NLBP and being behind the soul professional movement is to get others to rise, right? So my purpose is for everyone else to have a bigger business. It's to teach the business skills to the people that need it so they can rise. 
Yes. Oh, and that's I would beautiful. do that if I won the lottery today and never needed another <laughs> dime, I would still do that. And I yes. think that is a good barometer for someone. Mm. If you would do it anyway, like you wake up and you love it. I love talking to people. I love helping people. And I'm always like, hey, let me help you strategize. Let me help you um, figure that out. Because I love strategizing. I love building companies. I can't stand running them. Mm. And I knew that about <laughs> myself. So as I created this, I was like, what do I love? And what do I not love? Mm. And let me create a business or something, a role for myself that suits that purpose. And I always have to kind of go back and say, is that really my mission? Because in the nonprofit world, we talk about mission creeping, uh-huh. getting off mission. Like you're, you're, you're doing all of this stuff, but it's not helping you move forward in your mission. Right. Mission right. Creeping. So do we want to stay, what I say, in your lane of joy, mm-hmm. still bringing you joy or you do, do you feel abundant doing it? So your purpose is more of people always ask, how do I find my purpose? I think that your purpose, your passion is something that you would do anyway. Yes. Right. Whether mm-hmm. it brought you money or not. Yes. Because when you are that passionate, it will bring you money. You just have to be creative and build it that way. A lot of people I find, especially soul aligned people are in the service industry, but they're afraid to make money. Mm-hmm. And I, you know what? I was caught there for a long time where I was kind of like, do we go big? Do I just help some people do it? Like, how do I do it? And it, and it took a while and it was really a mind shift change to say, I'm doing this and I'm going big and this is how I'm going to do it. Like, but it took a mind shift change of me saying I can do it. Yes. But I want to do, and I'm going to go big doing it. What I'm hearing in there too, Camille, is that balance between action and reflection. You know, sometimes we're so driven that we forget the time to check in, check our barometer. Is this making my heart sing? Is this something that I love doing? How is this feeling for me? Is this moving me further in my mission or is it taking me off track? And who am I impacting? All of those questions and reflection and making sure that we are aligned and we do stay aligned as we continue to move forward and to go and to take that time for that reflection and not just always in the action mode, because that reflection is one of the actions too, to help make it sustainable. And I love how you spoke about, is this something that I love to do? An acronym that was shared with me many years ago that I love for love (laughs) is lots of vital energy, especially for people that, yeah, that have been hurt by love. Sometimes that could be a trigger word, you know, but when you think of it, as lots of vital energy, then that's a good barometer too to be able to say like, is this energizing me? Do I feel alive? Do I feel on yeah. purpose? You know, it's that feeling that's generated by doing what you love and being aligned Absolutely. with soul. Yeah, and you also spoke about passion. And the way I think about that is when you break up the word, it's pass I on. And that I is your soul's expression of what you're here to pass on in this lifetime. And I hear that when you're talking about what you're doing and how it evolved for you and how it just naturally progressed out of, you know, all of the things, right, your skills and abilities, but tapping into the potency is what your soul's expression is and what you're here passing on and created this whole movement, this soul professional movement and the NLBP, the Natural Life Business Partnership. So tell us a little bit more about that NLBP. Yeah, so um, that's that's the name of the organization, the Natural Life Business Partnership. And really, it's a collaborative way of people coming together and doing business and growing as a human. Mm. I think it's important. I just want to make a point on our last talk that there's so many people that start a career in their passion. Mm right? A doctor, a lawyer, an engineer, whatever you are doing. And then they hit that point in their life and they're like, this isn't what I thought it would be. Right. Like I went into this because I loved it. And they usually ended up working for someone else and they took on all the stuff that they didn't love. Mm. But I think it's important to say that you can find purpose and passion again in whatever career, whatever field discipline you are in, you just have to create it around what makes your heart sing. You just yes. have to create it around your goodness, your what what you like to do. That's why I don't like running businesses. So I help people strategize. That's the part that I love, mm-hmm. right? Or or creating a blueprint of what that looks like. 
Yes. And I was like, you go find yourself a coach. This is what you should be doing, right? Here, here's how it can be structured. This is how we can create your business. This is what it could look like, but you don't want a mission, Craig. So um, now I'll answer the question you just asked, NLBP. <laughs> so uh, we talk about being a professional organization. Uh, we are networking and a business incubator. That's how we uh, actually mm. now they're saying business and mindset incubator. I love that. So it's all around um, the inner work that creates the outer success. Yes, absolutely. So we have masterminds at different levels. If you're just starting your business out, if you're a six figure soul, or we have our inner circle, which are leading brands um, 250 or better. They have a staff of two or more. Uh, we have people over a million dollars and those are CEOs coming together to mm. still do it in a soul aligned way and still have a conscious way that they're leading and they're empowering all the people that work for them. So it's a different way of leadership. Um, and that really created that little inner circle created last January isn't even a year old because I could, as I grew, I could not find a mastermind or a group that was that didn't fall back into the ego at that like 350 mark that seems right. to be the mark where they just go right back down mm -hmm. <laughs> and i couldn't find it so again i created it and it was yes. really so i could grow uh but nlbp is all about mentorship when mm. you come into the community it's a membership community uh but when you come into the community we help you get to wherever you want to go, whatever that is for you. If you want to hit six figures, if you want a million dollar company and there's stages that you can go up in your membership. And when people hit it, they give back and they mentor the people below them. So it's not about me or a coaching community around me. When you come in, there's 20 different coaches yeah. and it's all part of it. So we have what are called micro communities. So we have mm. one called Woo and Wealth. There's all Very about well. finances, <laughs> your taxes. We have um, uh, messaging and marketing. We have a long-term strategy. Um, branding is a long-term strategy. Uh, but we also have mindset mastery and soul curiosity and you know self-care because we believe that it's all of it. So yes. you might not go into the inner circle with people that are running businesses, you know, 500,000 or better, but that same person might be in mindset mastery because we have money blocks, but they're just at a different level. So you're really networking with all of these different people in different ways as we build better humans. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Build better humans. And that soul curiosity. I mean, going back to the beginning of your story, when you were sitting there, you know, other things had fallen apart or doors had closed and you're like, okay, now what, right? What else yeah. is possible? What is being curious, you know, not getting into the fear state and panicking about the uncertainty and the unknown, but stepping into that place of soul curiosity, what else is possible? What now, you know, and in more of an uplifted sense Absolutely. than rather than that fearful sense. Yeah. And you mentioned the book as well, The Ultimate Guide. And I know it's a collaborative project of many of these old professionals you talk about. There it is. This is our first that have come together. Yeah. Yes. And so what did you notice that came about as some common threads that people were sharing, their messages, their stories? What were some of those patterns that you saw in there as that book came together? Yeah. So this first book was just creating a business that's a, that's in alignment. Okay. Like where mm -hmm. were you and, and what made you hit that shift of going that aha moment. Mm -hmm. And uh, the book is full of each one gave their story and a strategy that helped them uh -huh. um, in reading that book, because I didn't read it to the publisher had put it all together. All the final edits were done before it, obviously before it printed, I read it. And when I was doing my final read through, I was like, oh my God, we actually all have the same story, but it came from such a different way and maybe a different strategy. But to me, it was all mindset. It was saying, I'm going to do it my way from here on in. Yeah, right? it's mm. going to be like, I'm still going to do this if it's marketing, if it's leadership, if it's coaching, you know, whatever it is. But you have that moment of now I see clearly I'm going to do it 
from a place of abundance. I'm going to do it from, it was like a mindset. It's a mindset shift. And I mm-hmm. think that's really, we're working on the second book now of becoming a six figure soul professional. It's the same thing. It's mindset. It's just a bigger shift because, um, as you create the business, so you grow the business, you keep hitting that same seal. I don't know if it's a sticky floor or a glass ceiling. I really yeah. don't know. What you're doing, <laughs> but I hit it myself at every level. And then I have to go find someone who's already broken it mm. and stay in that circle. So surrounding yourself with people that believe in you. And that is not usually friends and family. If you want to be an entrepreneur, you got to hang around entrepreneurs. If you want to be a millionaire, you got to hang around millionaires, right? If you want to be a successful leader, you got to hang around successful leaders. Like whatever that is, Mm -hmm. you have to learn from those people. It could be in a very organic way, you know, just being in their presence or having the conversation. But I think the common thread is making that decision to do so. And that's hard. It's taking a leap of faith. It is. It is. And it's living in that higher vibration, too, with the people Absolutely. that you surround yourself up, that lift you up, that that are ahead of you, that mentor each other. Like you say, they're all at different levels, but then we're supporting each other yes. as well. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I think that's beautiful. And what do you think is the end result of all of that? What do you see as the bigger picture? Like, why is all of this so important? You mean in the world or just in our community? Yeah, in the yeah. World? ultimately, yeah. I, I think I think there's an evolution happening. Mm-hmm. It's I think it started before 2020. And I think that was one of the reasons I started NLBP. Because to me, I felt it was like a knowing. It was yeah. like, I knew the world needed this, but I didn't know why the world needed this. I just really believed that this was the right thing to do. Yes. And every time I doubt myself and go, do we need this? All I hear is, yeah, we need this. And you're leading it for us. Mm-hmm, you know? mm-hmm. uh, but I do believe the world is going through an evolution. And there's this new generation of people coming through. And some of the people that have been here for a while, including myself, are changing our how we see business, how we rank success, how we, def- I shouldn't say rank, define success, mm-hmm. right? It's not stuff anymore. It's yeah. not things. It's not the big house. It's not the fancy car. It's not, you know, but I define success as being able to send all of my children plane tickets to meet me anywhere in the world. Uh, That's how I define success. That's how yeah. I will know. And you can see my little vision board here. It has all these oceans. That's Italy, right? <laughs> so because that's my freedom, right? Mm-hmm. And I think that the, um, the, um, 2020, I don't even know what to call it anymore. The pandemic, the shutdown, the, you know, that time in our lives, I felt put us all on this kind of equal playing field. I know it's not equal for everybody, but we were all in the same situation, mm-hmm. right? We mm-hmm. were all shut in and we were all contemplating the people we hung around with uh-huh. our life choices, right? When we weren't going to work anymore. Or some of us were going to work. We were doing it differently. Some of us were in the same patterns, but it showed us, I think, what was missing in the world, mm-hmm. right? When you didn't have to do that commute, when you woke up and you saw your kids and you were cooking dinners together because you had to, yeah. right? It forced us to kind of go back right? To the way it was. I know we started having family dinners and cooking and, and we started looking up all of my family's old recipes because I was like, I don't know if they're going to run out of food. I started looking up like recipes my grandmother did during the great depression. Cause I was like, wow. I don't know what's going to happen. So let's start preparing now. Mm-hmm. Let's get our potatoes. Let's get like all. And we started pantries and everything because it was a time, but as we came out of that, people started to go, wait, I kind of loved my life, this new life, this new way. And I felt more purpose. I felt mm-hmm. closer to people. Um, I thought I've always run a virtual business so nothing changed because we were already a virtual community. Mm-hmm. But what I absolutely love is no matter where in the world I was talking to someone, I can say, what's it like for you? Yeah. And I loved learning about what's it like in your country? What what's, you know, because it was so different, but we were going through the same thing. 
Mm -hmm. right and Mm -hmm. I learned I kind of knew it that we were we we were all the same battling the same things right we all had family we all had people we were worried about we all had you know things we believed and didn't believe it like it was kind of finding our way and I think it was part of that evolution but here a few years later as entrepreneurs I think we're keeping that mindset right? We're keeping the self-care. We're keeping the abundance. We're saying, I don't want to work for money that doesn't, that just buys me stuff. Like I want to work more for a purpose. I want to work in my passion. I want to love what I do. Um, You know, I want it to be more integrated into my everyday life and who I am. Yes. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think people are trying to figure that out right now. And I think it's a big time for community. I think people are trying to figure out where they fit in and who they want to hang with. Um, yes. Yeah. So, and I, and I do believe that the generation that's coming, I, I, I want to say it's the, I don't even know the letters anymore. The, the ones that are um, just coming out of college now, they're about 22 from the two thousands on, they were born in the two thousands, mm-hmm. right. From 2000 on. I believe that they're the generation that are going to change us and going to change the world. Mm. But my generation are the parents, right? So we're watching our kids and our beliefs are changing because of it. Right. And we're watching the change. And I have three creatives and I'm like, follow your heart. It doesn't matter anymore. Like when they were little, it was like, we're all getting master's degrees. We're all doing this. Like, this is what you do. And now Mm -hmm. I don't care what you do. (laughs) Just find find mentors and it's who you know. Yes, yes. Keep changing jobs and figuring it out. Like it's a it's a very different way of doing business. But you know, they never really worked traditional jobs. Right. Yeah, because they didn't want to deal with the people. Exactly. <laughs> they felt that you know the people were mean. And um I'm like, yeah, I, I totally get it. And they have a different way about how money works and so so important to foster foster that to foster that kind of culture and their gifts and to help them being able to express their soul find that eye that they're here to pass on right to step into that passion and this is what the podcast is all about too for awaken and ascent here on youtube is for people to feel inspired and empowered and supported in cultivating this integrated higher consciousness model of living, this one that you're speaking of now. And there's a lot of work that you do, Camille, that supports people in that as well. And so can you share a little bit about more about that specifically, um, what you do and how people can connect with you? Yeah, so um, the best way to connect is uh, on our website, soulprofessional.com. Um, if anyone wants to talk to me personally, if they want a strategy session or something, they can go to soulprofessional.com backslash strategy. And only if you've heard this interview, will you be able to get that? <laughs> uh, it's only when I speak, um, that, I, that I'll also speak with people because I want to know what people are creating in the world. Mm, um, you. yeah, you're welcome. Um, I totally forgot what your question was. I'm sorry. <laughs> How people can connect and the work you would sorry. do with them yes. if they did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So in the community, um, it's really about giving you all the support and love and, and technical help that you need to bring whatever your gifts are in the world, because the, the world needs you. If you're listening to this, the world needs you, whatever you're bringing and don't have that mindset of, eh, I can't make money doing that because you can. Mm -hmm. And that's what we want to empower you to say, yes, I can. And I'm going to do it my way. And I don't believe there's competition out there because you are you, everyone brings themselves. So there's no competition. You just do you and you do it the best way possible to make whatever money you choose to make. Um, And we're here to help you do that. Yes, That's yes. What the community is all about. So you're meeting other people. The the best testimonial I ever get is, oh my God, I didn't know this existed. This is uh-huh. incredible. Mm-hmm. And in, in 2021, we had a 98% renewal rate, which is unheard of in memberships. Wow. Unheard of. People wow. don't leave. Yeah. 
Yeah, because yeah. it really yeah. is a true community that supports yes. you. It's... And we'll have those links in the show notes as well. Awesome. And we keep going back to, you know, following your own direction. And that reminds me of a quote from Euripides, like, I don't know how many years ago now <laughs> that he said it, you know, the wisest follow their own direction. And I wonder if you, Camille, have any final words of wisdom for us? Oh, my gosh. Um, I always say, stay in your lane of joy. Mm. That's what I always have one. Stay in your lane of joy. If it does not bring you joy, do not do it. And And that's it. Like in everything <laughs> in life. What is that? Stay in yeah. your lane of Stay joy. Stay in your lane of yes. joy. <laughs> right? Yes. If it doesn't bring you joy. Don't do it. And I don't care what that is. Just don't do it. Amazing. Thank you so very much, Camille. This has been amazing. I love all the work you're doing. Thank, Thank you, you for your service to humanity. I know that it has made a difference. It is making a difference and it will continue to make a difference. And to each and every one of you that have been listening and watching, you too are making a difference. Who you are makes a difference. And so thank you for being here and continue to join us every week on Awaken and Ascend. We have amazing speakers from all around the world that are here to support you and share how they came to do this as well. Camille, thank you once again thank for being you. here and joining me. It's been such a pleasure. Yes, thank you, Jennifer. I appreciate you. Thank you. We'll see you all again next time. Bye for now.